Amen. I'm just filled with a lot of warm in my heart uh, from knowing that all these beautiful students are promoting from one level to the next and to the next season in their life. And so all of you um, coming into youth group, I receive you with arms and heart wide open. I've gotten the pleasure to know you uh, this past year at Club 56 and it's I just can't wait for the next adventure that we're about to embark on. Um, that being said, I'd like to uh, say a little something before introducing two of our speakers today. Um, this time of the year is often filled with multiple celebrations. And this time around, we are at a loss of our ceremonies and spaces of shared celebration. When graduation was canceled, I cried because as a Latina minister and a Black student, my success is not just mine, but my community's. It is a shared celebration that has come at a time where it feels odd to celebrate. These traditions and rites of passages make our community stronger and families warmer. Yet the graduating classes of 2020 have had to redefine what it means to honor tradition and find space for celebration in the midst of trauma and loss. We have shown how resilient we can be with creative expressions such as graduation caravans to celebrate friends, as well as drive-through graduations to receive diplomas. The way these classes of 2020 have responded to this time is a practical expression of today's scripture. Particularly, this class of high school graduates have been through plenty of crisis through their relative short lifespan, yet they have shown us how to develop patience that perseveres through problems and seeks creative solutions. These troubles have developed passionate patience in all of us. And this patience has made us alert to God's work in our communities and the world. In these hardships, our character has been formed by the fire of the Holy Spirit, which has given us the agency and advocacy to fight for both social holiness and racial reconciliation. God shows us to be the classes of 2020. We are standing at such a time like this for such a time like this. So it is my pleasure to introduce the wonderful Emily Pearson, Newberry Park High School graduate, as she brings the word with her thoughts on how character produces hope. Following her video, we will hear from TO High School graduate Jesus Orozco as he speaks about how hope removes shame. Congratulations, class of 2020. We did it. So in the scripture, Romans chapter five, verses three through four, it reads, and not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope. So when I read that verse, um, I struggle to connect to it on a personal level just because I haven't had to endure a lot of suffering. Um, I have lived a very privileged and blessed life, um, but something that I have struggled with throughout my life is constantly worrying. And recently, like over the past couple years, that worry has turned into anxiety. Um, and recently I have begun reflecting on why I think I struggle with a tendency to worry and anxiety. Um, and I've come to the conclusion that a lot of it is rooted in the era that I grew up in. Um, I think it's important to acknowledge that my generation grew up in very different circumstances than the older generations. Um, an obvious example would be technology and just the accessibility of the internet, um, social media. I think my generation was the first to really grow up with technology everywhere. Um, everyone has phones nowadays. Social media is used by almost everybody. 
So a lot of those things can cause anxiety. And obviously having um, the internet and technology so accessible has a lot of benefits, but like I said, it can also have a lot of drawbacks um, and cause a lot of insecurity, anxiety in teens and youth. Um, and another thing I think that kind of goes along with just being in the age of information, um, you know, since, since the internet is so accessible, we obviously have access to a lot more information. And that is a great thing, but at the same time, that also has its drawbacks. So like, um, I've grown up, you know, just always reading the news and always being aware of what's going on in the world around me, which I think um, is really important. But it has also, I think, caused me to worry more and to have anxiety about um, the future and just like the state of our world because a lot of what I read, a lot of what everyone reads um, on the internet and in terms of like the news and stuff is mostly negative. So I think it's really easy to be overwhelmed by a lot of the um, negative things going on in the world and that can cause people, especially me, to doubt the future and to just have a lot of fear about what's to come. And I know the Bible teaches um, not to have anxiety, you know, to cast your fears and your anxieties on God because ultimately the future is in His hands. And that's something I'm still working on. I think it's a lot easier said than done. Um, but it's something that I'm definitely trying to improve. Um, but for me personally, kind of going along with just being informed about what's going on in the world, while that has led me to be anxious, I think it also, um, at least like this part of the verse that says, character produces hope, that part really resonates with me because I feel like I'm most at peace and I'm most hopeful when I see others who are informed about the world and who want to make the world a better place and improve the future for my generation and the generations to come. And um, I'll give you an example, like I've attended uh, multiple different protests and when you're in the midst of hundreds and thousands of other people who are marching alongside you and taking a stand um, for the same causes that you are, that just really gives me a lot of hope um, because it just reassures me that there are people in the world who also want justice and also want um, to make the world a better place for in the future. And um, like climate change is a good example. I think that can cause a lot of anxiety for my generation um, just because we know we're gonna be um, growing old with the uncertainty of the planet. And I think that's really scary to not know, you know, how our planet is going to sustain itself um, for our generation and future generations, our kids and our grandkids. So I think when I see people who are also concerned about issues like that, um, and human rights issues, all different issues that have to do with um, just making the world a better place. Um, when I see other people who are concerned about those issues and standing up for those issues as well, that gives me hope and that's what I associate character with. 
I think people who have good character um, care about justice and care about loving others unconditionally and care about leaving this planet a better place for everyone, all humans on the planet. So that is just a bit of my interpretation on the verse and what gives me hope when I feel anxious about the future which I think, especially in these times, it's very easy to get caught up in worry and fear because of the uncertainty of everything. Um, but I'm working on trying to cast my fears and my anxieties onto God and let Him control those and let Him handle those because ultimately I have no control over the future or over the state of the world, um, I need to understand that that's in God's hands and worrying is not gonna fix that. So that's just my interpretation. Um, but I do think it's really important to find hope in the midst of worry and fear and anxiety and for me, I find hope by turning to the people around me who I feel like have good character and who also care about the things that I care about, um, who basically care about, you know, making the world a better place for everyone who lives on it, so... Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Jesus Orozco, and I've been coming uh, to youth group since I was in sixth grade, and I just graduated high school. And today, I'm going to talk to you about uh, Romans 5, 1 through 8, and this is, the, this is what I wrote. The scripture, Romans 5, 1 through 8, talks about how God died for us while we are sinners. At first, I read the scripture and I didn't understand it, but then I closed my eyes and let, let God tell me what I need to know. Well, you see, when we have faith, we have hope. When someone hopes for something, it is normally for something they really desire. We get to enjoy our desires thanks to the Holy Spirit. We also have bad hopes when our hearts are not filled with God's love. When you wake up every morning, since I was born until now, I can see how much my God loves me. I've been in and out of hospitals. My, <laughs> I've been in and out of hospitals many times. I, and I always hope for a safe surgery and God's faith never has failed me. When I was depressed and doubted God, his, his love and the people he sent for us were there with me. If you were to take the time and think when you were sad or ill or needed the God most, who was there, who was the person that was next to you the whole time? Because that person is the angel that God has sent for you. God shows you he loves you every day. I remember a time when I was with my friends doing bad stuff and I got home and I thought to myself, how did I get home safe and I get pulled over by the cops? <laughs> At that <laughs> night, I apologized to God and I knew he had someone watching me. If you have hope, God removes shame and forgiveness. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jesus. And uh, what a beautiful and inspiring message we have. Uh, from both Emily and Jesus. Um, so with that being said, let us pray today. Um, Santo Dios, gracias por la oportunidad de celebrar en comunidad. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity of celebrating in community the beauty of graduation. Um, Lord, I pray that you are with every single of our graduates, but especially our high school graduated eighth who are going into a world of the unknown with hopes 
and desires, Lord, I know that you're going to take care of them and that you are going to um, speak to them and care for them in their particular needs. Lord, help us be the community that they need to grow into the adults that you are calling them to be. Lord, give us the words of wisdom to inspire, the words of courage to uh, cheer them on, Lord, to whatever task they're um, on. Lord, I pray for every movement that they're going to start. May they see it through uh, in your presence. Lord, give them, the, give them your spirit, guiding them and taking care of them. Lord, I also want to take a moment to pray for all of the needs of our community, all of uh, us who are suffering, Lord, uh, whether it's sickness or emotional or financial, Lord, I pray that you take a hold of these needs and you uh, lift the burden, Lord. I pray a miracle for our communities. Um, I pray for our, uh, Black siblings, Lord, out there. Uh, keep them safe, Lord. Protect them. I pray for um, the rest of our uh, teaching community, Lord, as they prepare for a new year and a new summer uh, with all these interesting rules on how to keep each other safe, Lord. Um, give, give us the wisdom of everything uh, and how to handle everything the way that you want us to. Um, and Lord, let us pray together as a community um, that prayer that you've taught us to pray. Our Father, Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a nosotros tu reino y hágase tu voluntad aquí en la tierra como en el cielo. El pan nuestro de cada día danoslo hoy. Y perdona nuestras ofensas así como nosotros perdonamos a quienes nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en tentación, mas líbranos del mal. Porque tuyo es el reino, el poder y la gloria por los siglos de los siglos. Amén.